Hello everyone, it's me Varus, and in this video I'm going to be going to show you guys my second winter forecast for this upcoming winter 2024 to 2025. So yeah, um, I do these for every beginning of the month, so I did one for October, this is the second one for November, and the final one will be in December. So yeah, hope you enjoy, and let's get right into it. So starting out with the CDAS Nino 3.4 index, which helps us know what phase of Enzo we are in. We are currently in a La Nina. Right now, kind of a weak La Nina where our latest value is negative 0.609. In the last update, which I did in early October, we were around seven, eight, around one below Celsius, one below average in Celsius, but now we're back up at 0.6 below Celsius. So 0.6 below in Celsius. So that means we're actually kind of rising back up, and that means our La Nina is actually weakening right now. Now, this could just be um, temporary, as there was a temporary push of warmer uh, trade winds. However, this could be start also be a start of a new trend as we continue through the month of November. Um, but right now, yep, we're at a weak La Nina. If we do go above negative 0.5, we'd kind of be in an Enzo, Enzo cool pattern which kind of changes up everything. But we're going to continue observing this, see what happens, and take note of that into our incoming winter forecasts and upcoming winter. So let's see how it looks right now, December, January, February. So this is kind of a forecast, okay? And we see our La Nina, nice, bold, right here, okay? And we kind of see a central La Nina. So we were thinking maybe an eastern baseline Nina would be possible where we have much of the colder uh, waters hugging on the South American coast. However, we're seeing it more spread out and more into the central Pacific. So that could, that kind of means different things. Now that means a more traditional La Nina pattern and less snow for the Northeast, Mid-Atlantic, Midwest, and more snow for the North Central U.S. If it was Eastern based, however, that could mean more snow for the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic states as well as the Midwest. So that's something I to keep watching. But as of right now, it does look like a central-based weak La Nina is the best thing we're going to be expecting this winter. Now, getting into other teleconnections, such as um, on the top image, the PNA and the NAO. Starting out with the positive PNA, we have positive PNA basically means warmer air and ridging along the west, which forces colder air and more moisture into the eastern U.S. This is what helps us get snowier storm, snow into the east and less dry conditions into the west. Now, a negative PNA, which we've been seeing most dominant in the recent winters, causes cold and wet snowier conditions in the west and warm, dry ridging in the east. So that's something we're, we're right now actually in a negative PNA. Well, actually, we're in a positive PNA going into a negative PNA. My fault. And then we also have NAO. And NAO is when we have blocking over Greenland and a ridge, which helps bring cold and snowier conditions into the northeast and eastern seaboard, whereas a NAO positive, positive NAO has troughing and colder bubbles of air near Greenland, which causes warmer conditions in the eastern portion of the US and that also kind of correlates into whether in the Europe whether in Europe cold and dry in a negative NAO warm and wet in a positive NAO similar to the eastern US conditions so those two teleconnections also play a role into NA into um, our winter so main three are NAO PNA and Enzo I'd say those are the main three however there are other ones such as QBO MJO PDO etc now, this is kind of a graph showing how much, like, snowfall departures in next to near normal in La Nina year. So, is it above average snowfall, below average snowfall? And we see above average for much of just the overall, the northern tier of the U.S., okay? If you're in this region, La Ninas tend to bring above average snowfall. Now, whereas if you're in these regions over here, we tend to see below average snowfall. Okay, this includes much of the southern U.S. and even middle portions of the U.S., whereas the northern tier is more above average snowfall, which is kind of what you would typically expect. 
than a La Nina year. And you see lots more snowfall in the mountainous regions of the Pacific Northwest and Rockies due to increased moisture and Pacific flow off the Pacific Ocean. So that's that. Now getting into my forecast. So I have temperature forecasts. Blue obviously representing below average. These warmer colors, red, brown, representing um, above average temperatures. So I expect below average temperatures for the north central and Pacific northwestern portions of the U.S. As that's what we typically see in La Nina. And many more cold blasts will be forced down as we'll see a negative PNA much more often, I think, this winter. That doesn't mean we won't see a positive PNA, but negative PNA much more likely. And this includes areas kind of getting into the Midwest, such as Minnesota, northern areas of Wisconsin, and the UP of Michigan. Now, above average conditions for m most of the south, southern U.S., entire Atlantic seaboard, and overall, just a lot of the U.S., most of the U.S. will be experiencing warmer than average temperatures. I will... Um, I, I wouldn't guarantee it, but I definitely think that's most likely going to be the case as we're going to see lots of Gulf warm air being lifted out. And as we see systems coming from the west and cutting inland, we'll see them, we'll see it reel in moisture and warmth from the Atlantic and pull down cooler air from the polar, from Canada to help cause snowier conditions into the mid kind of air, northwestern areas of the Midwest, mainly the north central U.S., and rain into the southern south southern portions of the U.S. and eastern the seaboard. Just so, honestly, this temperature is going to be much warmer over here because of the storm tracks and the way that this winter is looking to set up as we have a La Nina negative PDO, much more likely chances of negative PNAs and positive NAO. I'm getting into precipitation, I expect above average precipitation for relatively the entire north northern tier of the U.S. You could say that also the mid-Atlantic regions over here. And then less precipitation down here in the southern tier of the U.S. Um, as we just won't have this active southern jet stream, which will not really be, it won't be that active. It won't cause much of precipitation, honestly in the south. That doesn't mean it won't be active at times, but just expect slightly below average precipitation, especially in the desert areas of the southwest, southwest overall of the U.S. So yeah, that's uh, mainly affected because of La Nina. Now, what you guys all been waiting for, the overall forecast. So we'll go west to east, starting out in the Pacific Northwest, wintry and wet. So I'm expecting lots of snow in the mountainous regions of the Pacific Northwest, due to our active Pacific stream and northern jet stream supplying moisture and cold air from Canada, meeting up, causing wintry conditions and wet conditions in the lower elevations. So this includes states such as Washington, Oregon, areas of Idaho, Nevada, and areas of California. And then that's that. Moving south and east, we have this purple region, which shows big mountain snows, including the California mountain range, the Rockies, areas of Colorado, um, south, southwestern Wyoming, any mountainous regions in Utah and Idaho, all expecting some big mountain snows, and even into New Mexico and Arizona. While if you're in the lower elevations, I still expect so this kind of split. So if you were above this black line, expect wetter, cooler conditions. Below would expect warmer, drier conditions. Now moving south of that, we have this kind of brown tan region, warm and dry conditions, given lack of moisture and just warmth due to ridging, slight ridging down here in the south. This includes areas of Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, lower elevations, and California. And again, in the big mount in mountain snows areas, that includes the whole state of Utah, most of Nevada, California, New Mexico, Arizona, Wyoming, Colorado, Idaho, and areas of Montana, and even areas of Texas. So, yeah, now moving kind of, we'll move east into this green, dark, dark green forest type regions. I expect steamy, dry, stormy at times. So, it'll relatively be dry. However, when we do see storms coming across, we do, I do expect some gulf moisture to be pulled in, meeting with cooler moisture, cooler air, drier air behind the fronts of these storms. 
and that would obviously spark some severe weather and stormy, unsettled conditions. So this is overall the entire southeast, so Florida, Georgia, Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, South Carolina, North Carolina, and many other areas. Now we'll move north of that into this more tan region, I'd say. So this kind of the warm and dry region is kind of brown. This area is more tan. Overall, this will be a quiet, I feel like a little more of a quiet winter for the you guys over here. I do think it will be slightly warmer and drier. However, I do expect relatively average conditions um, besides that in this region. So just a quiet, not too eventful winter for you guys. Kind of this is right into central of the U.S. So that's what I'm expecting. Now we'll move north of that into this bright, alarming pink color. This is where the worst of winter will be. Really, really good cold air supply. I mean, we're going to have consistent storms cutting in at times, and that'll help to meet up with some moisture from the south, and then that really, really cold um, uh, cold air causing just really massive storms, big-time snows over here, and this includes a lot, the entire north-central U.S., the Dakotas, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, Nebraska, Montana, areas of Wyoming, areas of Colorado, Kansas areas, uh, Northern Kansas, UP of Michigan, Michigan itself most likely, most of it, and areas of Illinois, Chicago right on the border. So all of these areas I expect the worst of winter. It'll just be absolutely dumping at times. And then moving more eastwards into this kind of this dark blue region, I expect interior snows. So as I did repeat, we are going to see lots of inland cutting storms. And so many interior store snows will be likely due to La Nina just having that northern, since that northern jet is so up north, it helps to reel in storms and turn them inland, causing snow to be limited to these inland regions of the northeast and not these coastal regions over here. And then moving south, speaking of the coastal regions, the last area is going to be, of course, the winter battle zone. Ice, rain, lots of rain, snow, a couple big snow events maybe, but overall just everything. Ice, freezing rain, sleet, rain, snow, everything. Ropple, thunder, snow, who knows, but a, just a big mix of everything. Um, this includes most of the mid-Atlantic areas. It includes major cities, Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, Boston, uh, St. Louis, I actually included in here, Cincinnati, Cincinnati. Um, Columbus is kind of right in there, um, areas of Louisville, uh, and many other areas, Richmond, for example, all in this area. So, going to be very variable, going to be very interesting, um, but yeah, this is going to be a winter battle zone. Lots of rain, it's definitely going to be expected given this La Nina pattern. If it is enzo, if it is possibly enzo neutral, which I'll explain more at the end, that could change, but lots of rain, but at the same time, I do think some good snow shots, nice, sufficient snow. Still below average, but I do think a good amount of snow still in store. Maybe even more than last year, I think, for some areas along 995 is in store for this winter. So, yeah, this is my overall forecast for the winter forecast number two. And then getting into, if you want to take a screenshot, here's the opportunity. And uh, yeah, let's get into the last thing, additional details. I'll read off each bullet point. So starting off with this one, La Nina is already starting to weaken. And this is something to take note of as we head into later this month and through the month of December. An active start to winter in December looks very possible for the eastern U.S. Snow lovers, as these years tend to have a favorable clipper pattern and more of light snows for these areas. So let's actually talk, talk about these two. So the first, La Nina is already starting to weaken. So as I showed you guys in the earlier portion of the video, we're starting to warm up. And that could be a signal that La Nina is just not going to stay as strong. And it's maybe not even meet weak La Nina criteria. Who knows? It might be an Enzo cool neutral. So that's something we're going to have to keep an eye on as we continue through the month of November and into December and even into January it's, and further on. And then the second portion, an active start to winter in December looks very possible for the Eastern U.S. With the winter, with these um, patterns we've been seeing, these La Ninas have many analogs and they tend to favor a very active, not like super, super active, but a relatively fair December that brings some nice snow, light snow events, even a major, even a good medium sized snowstorm 
for the eastern portions of the U.S. So I feel like December will actually be a wild card and actually might be pretty active, which does represent that an early active start to winter is very possible for the eastern U.S., many clippers included. And then these next three, as we get deeper, depending on Enzo, PNA, and NAO, we'll likely see the West get into more action as many inland cunning storms occur in the East. So, yep, I think as we get deeper, we'll see many more opportunities for the West to cash into snow as PNA tends to stay negative, NAO tends to, to stay positive. And I just think we'll see lots of inland cutting storms as we get, especially into January and uh, into February, especially. And then the next bullet point with this, an Enzo neutral, um, if it is squeezed out, given these early warmings of the end of Nino 3.4 region, by winter season, the forecast would likely change. A major implication that may occur. So if we do see an Enzo instead of a La Nina, that is a wild card. And if that happens, that many, many uh, factors will need to be taken into consideration. And honestly, our forecast could just completely change. So something we'd have to keep an eye on. And then lastly, some recent similar analogs include winter of 2021, 2020 to 2021, and 2023 to 2024. Um so these winters actually okay so i actually do want to cross this out 2022 to 2023 these winters so um 2021 actually brought a very active december and brought lots of snow and caused us to have a very good season uh still i think around right around average snowfall um but it was a pretty good season it was la nina so I, that's a very close analog to this year. And then this winter, um, to, or sorry, 2022 to 2023 was a very snowless season for the eastern U.S. So I'm actually kind of going off the eastern U.S., 2022 to 2023, very snowless in the eastern U.S. and just absolutely dumped in the western U.S. So unfortunately for the eastern snow lovers like me, may be a little disappointed if this analog were to verify but these two are very different okay 2020 to 2021 seen a average snowfall around and then here we saw way below average so it's completely different um case scenarios that we're gonna have to see and um watch out for so that's it thank you guys for watching and yeah i hope you guys enjoy share this to your friends make sure to subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one have a great rest of your day Bye-bye.